session. There you go, just so you have the recording with you. Um, and welcome again, and thank you so much for being here with us on this webinar. This is going to be about learn how you can transform Alex in your class. And we're going to talk, we're going to hear from Dale Johnson, who's a director of University Design Institute at Arizona State University. But I'm going to leave the introductions for him. It will be better if he introduces himself. He, after this, we are going to have, uh, the session is going to be followed by an overview, how you can implement Alex at your institution. If you have any questions at all, I'm here in the background to support you. If you face any technical difficulties, you can use the chat 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 box if you need to interact with the presenter, or you can use the Q&A box if you have any kind of questions for us. Uh, we're more than happy to support you and help you. And because we're, I'm not going to delay this any further, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Dale. Um, Dale, can you please introduce us yourself and carry on with the presentation, please? Yes, thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Dale Johnson. I'm the Director of Digital Innovation at the University Design Institute at Arizona State University. I want to start by thanking Galala University and Nanis Kailil for inviting me to speak today. Uh, I have been working with McGraw-Hill Education for the last seven years and uh, as a client using their products. So I'm excited to talk to you today about my experience with the, using Alex in a course, and we're also excited to have the close relationship with Galala University as part of the Sintana Alliance. So Arizona State is located in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we are the largest single public university in the United States. And as you'll notice from this data, almost half of our students are fully online. They never come to campus or uh, have to do anything in a face-to-face -face environment. So we have innovated quite a bit over the past eight years. Uh, we've been not uh, named the most innovative university now for eight years in a row by US News and World Report. And we're very proud of that fact. Part of the innovative activities that we've engaged in is the transformation of our college algebra course using Alex. So that's what I'll talk about today. Um, I work all over the world. Um, I've been working with universities in Mexico, in Brazil, throughout Africa. We have a, a large project with 10 universities there. Last year, I was in Dubai working with Zayed University. Uh, I've been in Kazakhstan working with uh, Nazarbayev Intellectual Schools and in Vietnam. So it's exciting for me to have the opportunity to talk to you today about the work we've done here at Arizona State, as well as the, the work that I've done elsewhere. I lead the Digital Transformation Initiative, and we focus on a wide variety of topics from leadership to partnerships. Today, I'm going to focus on teaching and learning. Uh, that's really the, the question that's on the table and the opportunity that Galala University has to innovate with teaching and learning. We've been doing the transformation of our pedagogy and technology for over 10 years, and we've worked in a wide variety of different subjects. Uh, the, the, for us, the transformation has been built around the elimination of large lectures. We used to have primarily large lectures with 200 to 300 students for most of these courses. And today we have a, a different process, a hybrid model, which focuses on students working in small teams doing problem solving. So when I think of the word transformation in teaching and learning, I'm thinking about the movement away from the lecture to active learning in the classroom with, with students doing problem-based exercises. One of the reasons why this is important and why we need to change how we teach is because we are in a battle for the attention of the students. You all know that the classroom has been transformed in the last 15 years by Wi-Fi and by cell phones. Uh, we are now struggling to maintain the attention of students. Some of you may be teaching in large lecture halls, and you may encounter these kinds of images where all the students have their laptops open and they're working on different things. 
Uh, the problem is without changing the pedagogy, we are left with students that are doing things that are not directly related to the educational process. In this case, the student is looking at baby photos in the back of the classroom. So the message today is this is not just about technology. We also need to transform our pedagogy in order to be successful in the 21st century. Uh, I love this quote because it sums up the challenges we face in higher education. We never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. So today, I'm going to talk about a new model for teaching using technology. And then you can ask me questions about how we did it and uh, what it might mean for Galala University. At Arizona State University, we were focused in our transformation efforts on the mission of enabling student success. We also have some very specific objectives for this process, improving critical thinking and problem solving, increasing student subject mastery, increased student retention, and improved instructor insight. Each one of these has a measurable outcome. For us, enabling student success implies we're going to achieve 90% freshman retention. When we started this process, we were at about 70%, and today we're at 89.6%. So we've almost achieved our goal through a, a wide array of digital transformation efforts. For critical thinking, we want the students to do at least 60 minutes of math problem solving per day. That's the commitment that they make as part of this process. Uh, we want to help 90% of the students get a C or better in our system, an A, a B, or a C is a passing grade. We want to reduce the withdrawal rate to under 5%. Withdrawal in the United States is a, is a serious problem. In our STEM classes, we often have anywhere between 20 and 40% withdrawal. That means that the student is paid for the course, but does not receive a final grade. And that's really a tragedy because they don't get their money and they don't get their grade. So we want to reduce that to less than 5%. And, and this transformation is focused on doing that. And then we want to help you, the professors, identify struggling students by week two. If it goes longer than two weeks at the beginning of a semester, it's often very difficult for a student to recover. So part of the, the reason why this is important is because we want to uh, in, in, we want to provide the information to the faculty members so they can help the students directly. So for us, this transformation is really a larger movement in our societies from mass production. And I wonder how many of you still have compact discs or CDs in your collection for music to mass personalization with millions of songs on your phone. Uh, I probably still have 300 CDs that I have in my closet, but I'm not even sure I have a CD player any longer to play the music. So the movement from mass production to mass personalization is occurring in every aspect of our life. In navigation, the, the ability to move around a city has been transformed in the last 10 years. And I've, as I mentioned, been working in Vietnam. I don't speak Vietnamese and I can't read the language, but I can navigate using my phone anywhere in the country by putting in an address. So as you think about how this affects your life, even in health, where the mass production model is being replaced by DNA analysis and mass personalization, we're seeing this influence all the different aspects of our daily lives. Oftentimes, we don't even realize that it's happening because we are, we are just immersed in process. Now, education struggles because we've had the same process for thousands of years. We teach the same lesson to all students at the same time. And that mass production process is what we are changing. We're now moving to a process where we teach the right lesson to the right student at the right time. If someone asks you, what do we mean by mass personalization? This is the, the definition. We wanna teach the right lesson to the right student at the right time. 
This is the future of education for all of the professors that are participating today in the seminar. This is what we want to achieve. You may think it's impossible, but I'm here to tell you it is very possible using Alex and a transformed pedagogy. So in order to convey the idea that we want to change our teaching process, we need to have some design principles. First is that every student has unique learning needs. This has always been true, but we never had a technology that enabled us to address this reality. So what we're doing is we are actually addressing an existing reality that has always been true. Students learn best by solving problems. This is what learning scientists have been telling us for 50 years. So we are focusing on problem solving as the part of the process. Students must demonstrate mastery of each lesson. And mastery in Alex is a very specific term, but in general, mastery means the ability to solve a problem repeatedly and have successful outcomes. So having the ability to solve these different problems successfully is really the, the goal here. And technology really depends on the teacher. So this is not going to replace our professors, it's going to enhance them. And that's where we're, we're focused, is how do we make the technology a more productive tool in this process? And finally, we're, we're struggling or, or we're focused on providing individualized instruction to students. This is where the, the difference occurs in their experience. So as you think about uh, your experience as a student many years ago, and what we're describing today, this is where the professor and the pupil are working closely together to solve problems, to understand what the student needs, and to successfully personalize that experience. We had a tremendous problem with college algebra, and we needed to improve our results. So we tried a variety of different techniques. You may also have tried similar uh, transformations in your experience. Our first effort in 2006 was to make our classes smaller. So we have uh, traditionally had 100 students or more in our algebra classes. This in 2006 was an effort to reduce the size. Unfortunately, it didn't work. We, we worked for four years on that process and it never improved our outcomes. So in 2009, we recommended students take the algebra class at a community college, which is a, another type of university in the United States that focuses on teaching. So students would go there, take a college algebra class, and in theory, come back to Arizona State. Unfortunately, that didn't work e either because they struggled at the community college to complete the course and they never came back to the university. So in 2011, we created a developmental math class, which was designed to provide a stepping stone to help students get to college algebra successfully. We spent a lot of time and money building a system to support this. And that also failed. So we were trying a variety of different experiments here that were not improving our results until we designed this mass personalization model in 2016 in collaboration with McGraw-Hill. So for us, that was a transformational moment when we did the new pedagogy and the new technology at the same time. So I want to talk a little bit about the thinking process there. And I have a pop quiz for you, all of you students in this seminar, uh, to, to think a little bit about this question. So we have a math placement test. We used MPP, which is the math placement test from McGraw-Hill. And that indicated that 38% of our first year students lack the skills needed to succeed in college algebra. So the question for you, in this quiz is, would you recommend those students take developmental math or 
go into college algebra directly. Now for us, as I mentioned, for the first five years, we were referring them into developmental math. Our problem was they were not successfully completing developmental math, so they weren't getting into college algebra. So our change was to think about how we would approach this differently. And the second question on this quiz is, what do you think will happen to your college algebra success rate, that is a grade of C or better, if they go directly into that course? When I started this process as the director of digital innovation in 2013, my first reaction was that if we put students directly into college algebra, they will fail at a higher rate because they're not prepared based on the knowledge that we have from our placement test. In fact, what happened was the opposite. So we were surprised, pleasantly surprised that our students were doing better. Now, what did we do on December 7th of 2015? The faculty members met to discuss what the plan would look like for 2016 and they decided to eliminate the developmental math class. That process that we had created and spent a lot of time and money on was not producing results, so we eliminated that. We established a new model of test when ready, competency-based course. This process is supported by Alex, which allowed us to see when a student was ready to take a test. We integrated Alex into the college algebra process as part of our transformation. And we created a new model where the students can stretch the first semester into a second semester if they didn't have enough time to complete the, the coursework in one semester. So all of these innovations and transformations were part of a massive restructuring of this course. Now, what happened in a student perspective is that we integrated those ideas into the personalization process, and it generated a tremendous amount of insight for our faculty members. Unfortunately, our old process was a black box where faculty did not know what was happening for the students. And they couldn't answer these basic questions like who needs help? What do they need help with? What's the best way to help the students? In our old model, all of those questions were unanswerable until after the first exam. And by then it was often too late because the students had fallen behind. So we tore open that black box and we implemented Alex. Now this is a graphic showing the personalized learning path of each student in one section of our college algebra course. There were 100 students in this section. If you notice on the vertical axis, there are 350 different topics that the students have to master. Those were selected by our algebra faculty members. And this was a semester in the fall from August through December. So you'll see, first of all, that every student has a unique path. This is the power of the adaptive technology. And as part of that process, there is an initial knowledge check. That shows that the students are starting at different levels. If we go back to our first design principle, every student has unique learning needs. You see right away, there's some students that have no knowledge of algebra on the first day, and some students that have over 50% of the topics completed. So when we look at an individual's path through this process, we see that this student worked very hard from zero to hero and completed in one semester. That's an example of a student that we want to celebrate 
because they invested a lot of time and effort to complete this course. This is a student that actually completed much faster because they started with over 50% of the coursework mastered on the first day. The, the second principle of test when ready uh, indicates that we will give them the final exam in October. We do not make this student wait until December to take the final exam. They will complete college algebra in October, and then they can take that time and they can invest it in other coursework. Maybe they're going to invest it in their biology or their, their uh, engineering work or some other course, but they will be done with this class. And of course, we have students that are doing well for a while and then they start to struggle. And this is where we use Alex to help find these students and assist them as quickly as possible. Obviously not all students are successful, but something happened here around the middle of September when this student began to struggle. And we are using more and more technology to find these students and help them to give them a successful completion. So as you think about this process, this is a good visual of how it affects students specifically. Now, as a group, we have over 10,000 students in college algebra every year. So this is a very large course. We have over 50 faculty members that work on this course. And as you notice here, when we shifted from the traditional mass production process to the transformation of mass personalization, our success rate went up dramatically. It actually increased by 17 percentage points in the first three years that we used this model. So for us, this was a tremendous success because when you look at the numbers, this is uh, over 1,500 additional students who were successful in completing college algebra. And these are the same instructors, the same curriculum, and the same assessments. So what we're really focused on is transforming the pedagogy and the technology and using Alex to do that. So the role of the instructor is changing dramatically. We are no longer doing lectures. There are no more lectures in our college algebra course sections. We have done a, a new process where we videotaped all of the instructional lectures And the, the instructors from our university made over 300 videos to explain the mathematical concepts. We place those videos into Alex, and when a student needs assistance, they click on the video link and they can watch their professor give them a lesson about that specific topic. So when you're thinking about your future as a professor, it's going to involve a lot more work on digital content. This is where the transformation affects us personally because the professors need to create and configure digital content. And that may be different from the traditional approach. So you have to learn how to do that. Uh, we, we have to learn how to design new learning experiences as part of the course. Uh, we have to utilize learning analytics to diagnose problems. This is all, new technology, so you have to become an expert in how to use Alex as part of your instructional process and help diagnose student problems. And we have to learn how to provide individual instruction to the students. That means that at any moment in time, we may be called upon as professors to do a lesson about any one of the topics in the course. This is quite a different challenge from the old model of having the same lesson for all students. And finally, we have to learn how to lead students through problem solving exercises. This is something that may not be immediately familiar to all professors, but it is part of the transformation because we are integrating the technology into this problem solving process. And that means that the faculty have to be comfortable with that. So here's an example of one of our professors who is doing a video 
and solving a problem. Now, the benefit of the video is quite uh, quite important because the students can watch it over and over again. When you do a lecture once in the classroom, it's gone forever. When you do a video, the students have access to it anytime, anywhere that they have connection to the internet. So for your students, uh, if they don't have a connection at home, they can come to the university and use the Wi-Fi at the university or go to the computer lab and watch these videos. For us, many students will come to the computer lab and put on headphones and watch their instructional videos. In the classroom, there's a different approach. We have the students working on computers in the classroom also. Most of our students bring their own computer now, so they have laptops. But then fa faculty members coach the students to improve. They're working one-on-one -on -one with the students, as I mentioned, individually instructing them to provide support if a student is stuck on a problem. We also have assistants in the classroom. We call them learning assistants. And they walk around and they also answer student questions when there's a particular problem. So the contact between the professor and the student is much more individualized. And the final component of this that's important is that students know that the faculty can see their personal progress. So they know that they have to work. If you remember, one of our objectives is to have the students do 60 minutes of math every day. So as we use Alex to, uh, to monitor them, we can see if they're doing their work or not. That's really important, especially in math, where we need the students doing problem solving. Now, Alex is, as you may know, assessment and learning and knowledge spaces. You have to map the topics to your curriculum. You have the initial knowledge check, which I talked about already. You have the personalized learning path, then focus on topic mastery. In Alex, that means that the students can do the same problem three times correctly in a row. And then the students uh, have progress knowledge checks, which are intermittent evaluations that the system uses. And the students can actually have their topics taken away if they don't do well on the progress knowledge check. So as you think about how Alex works, you have to, you have to understand this approach. The big difference is really moving from a fixed lesson plan to a variable lesson plan, from group presentation to individual, and from common content to personalized. This is a transformation from static to dynamic teaching. In, as I mentioned, in our world today, we have moved to a dynamic uh, interaction with our world through our cell phones, primarily. And, and this is now capturing that same transformation. For a student, this helps them when they struggle with a lesson because Alex allows you to put in support material. So if a student is having a problem in algebra, it may be something that they should have learned in a previous class. So Alex will allow the student to go back and review the various topics and then successfully move forward. So this is the concept of a three-dimensional knowledge space that enables the student to recover knowledge that they should have learned previously and then successfully move forward. We, we really want to move from this problem of delayed assistance to rapid remediation. The faster we can respond to a student in need, the more successful they will be. So as you think about the value of the technology, it's really designed to remediate as rapidly as possible. Now, I like to use this to describe how it helps our students. It, it respects their prior knowledge, responds to their learning needs, and reduces the gap in their understanding. And the personalized learning path enables the, each student to, uh, to make their own 
way through the course. So this is really the power of Alex. For us as faculty, we have the three M's, monitor, which students need assistance, measure curriculum performance, and maximize course outcomes. There are a wide variety of reports in Alex that you will be able to use to help you do these things. So as you learn about the technology, you will, be, you will begin to understand the power of these reports. Now, we had nine faculty and staff working on this transformation for eight months. We selected a textbook from the McGraw-Hill Library, took the entire Alex course from the student perspective. This was important because if you're going to use Alex, you have to understand how it works. So our faculty members were placed in Alex as students so that they could learn how it worked. Then they designed the curriculum with the 370 topics now. They agreed on exam questions for all of the sections. We added the Arizona State University videos and we created active learning problem sets for small group work. Every two weeks, the students stop working in Alex. We group them together based on their level of progress and they work on these group small group projects. So as part of the overall pedagogy, it is both the technology enabled personalization and the teamwork that have added value. And finally, the faculty had to train their colleagues on the new model. As I mentioned before, we have more than 50 faculty members teaching college algebra every semester. So keeping them informed and up to date is important. This transformation took a lot of effort. Faculty members, instructional designers, technologists, the vendor personnel, we had a team from McGraw-Hill assisting us. There were graphic designers involved, video producers. We even had librarians who assisted us with organizing the information and finding additional information. And then we had leadership. It's important that the leaders are involved, academic leaders specifically, because transformation is a team sport. It's impossible for one person to do all of this work in this new environment. So build your team to enable your success. And when I say leadership matters, I mean faculty leadership, the department chairperson, college dean, and university provosts all have to be aligned in order for this to be successful. If any one of these people has doubts about the transformation, then it's going to fall, fail. So you have to work closely across the entire academic leadership in order to align all four levels. We had very strong provosts and department chair leadership. We provided extra funding for the faculty work that they did outside of their regular responsibilities. We had a lot of faculty leadership and creativity. These were the thought leaders and innovators in our math department who made this possible. We used a lot of instructor peer mentoring for training because the faculty respected each other. And we had a lot of patience. As you saw, we started the process in 2006, and it wasn't until 10 years later in 2016 that we actually found a solution that was successful for us. So patience is critical in this process. It should not take you 10 years because you have the advantage of seeing our transformation and the technology is much, much better now. So you should be able to make this transformation in 10 months rather than 10 years. So at the end of all of this, we gathered together all the faculty members and we presented the data and celebrated our success the the challenge obviously for faculty is they rarely get a perspective of how well a process like this worked so for us to be able to celebrate we had some uh, apple juice that we were able to share at the university and celebrate their hard work and successful outcomes so i like to finish with this quote the best way to predict the future is to invent it and I want to challenge all of you at Galala University to invent the future of education in Egypt and be creative and transformational in your efforts. 
So it's it's been a pleasure presenting to you today, and I look forward to answering your questions and uh, hopefully supporting you again in the future as you continue on your transformational journey. So are there any questions now? And we have a couple of different ways to ask them. I think through the Q&A box, um, through the chat also uh, is possible. Thank you, Dale. That was wonderful. We can also unmute you and you can ask your question. You just have to raise your hand. So if you raise your hand, I can unmute you and you can ask your question. But as Dale said, use the Q&A box or the chat box. Any questions at all? There is a hand icon at the bottom of your screen. If you can hit the hand icon, I can unmute you and you can ask your question uh, during the session or use the Q&A box. Okay, I have Ahmed who wants to. Yes, Ahmed, please go on. Ahmed, you can unmute yourself. Okay, sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? Perfect, I can. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'd like I thank you first for your presentations. I, unfortunately, I wasn't able to uh, join from the beginning, but I almost got most of the information I need. I have a little uh, technical question regarding the difference exact between Alex, Alex 365 and Alex BBL as an instructor. I know there is, of course, a difference, but from instructor point of view, in order to manage uh, my duties or like how to get most benefit of this three modules, different modules with the name, uh, name uh, the same name, Alex. Yes. So first, PPL is a very unique product for the pre-assessment, and you should think about that as a separate process. So you can put that one on the side. Then Alex and Alex three hundred and sixty are very uh, variations on the product. Um, your support team from McGraw Hill will help you decide which of those two products is the, the right one for your courses. I understand you're thinking about pre calculus as your exactly. uh, target course. So, as you uh, start to build your team, you want to include a, an Alex representative on that team so that they can help you focus on the right product for your need. Okay. Okay, we have another question. Mohammed wants to ask a question. Mohammed, I can unmute you. Mohammed, you can unmute and ask the question. You can raise your hand if you have any questions. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Thank you for uh, your wonderful presentation. I have a small question. Uh, are you thinking about trying the same system for different courses other than the algebra? Because I, I see you are focusing only for the algebra courses. Yes, we have the same Alex system for college math and for pre-calculus. There are, in, the, in our model, the students have three different tracks in math. There's college math, which is a basic course when a student wants to study history or literature or something like that. Then there's college algebra, which is a starter course for our STEM majors, engineering, science, technology. And then there's calculus, which is if a student is able to successfully pass the Alex PPL, they can be placed into, al into calculus. So for us, each of those pathways has an Alex solution, and we are using it in different ways. As I mentioned in the last question, you'll find the right version of Alex for you, and the pedagogy may also be different for those different math classes. 
I showed you college algebra because it is the most unique version for us of Alex. And it, it gets the most personalized of the three. And it's also the largest with uh, over 10,000 students. Thank you. Thank you. Now, McGraw-Hill also has other products like Connect. So as you're thinking about other disciplines, if you're teaching biology or you're teaching um, psychology or economics, there are other tools that you can use. In this case, we use Alex because it has a focus on mathematics. We also use it in chemistry because there's a chemistry product, uh, but there are other uh, tools in your toolkit when you're working with McGraw-Hill. Thanks, Dale. Any question? Okshima oh, has a question as well, so I'm going to allow her to talk. Shaima, you can unmute. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much for this uh, great presentation. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're going to adopt pre-calculus and college algebra, so I think the Alex platform will be very useful for us. I just had a, a question. You are showing uh, this a slide of an instructor uh, having a video uh, or showing uh, some so, uh, some sort of demonstration is this being uh, set up through alex or alex and play positive together this is actually in our studio we have a, a very sophisticated studio support system so let me show you uh, we built a number of video studios at our university because of all of our online courses and Alex is just one use of this. We also place our instructional videos in Canvas and other uh, products in, uh, in our learning management system, and then in Connect when we're doing other courses in that product from McGraw-Hill. So for us, video is the new uh, focus of a lot of our instructional efforts, and we're moving our model to a hybrid course model where all of the lectures are videotaped and in class students are doing problem solving if, okay if so not... so so this is a separate system it's not included in alex uh, uh, for the instructor to be able to uh, stream uh, videos or live videos this is through another platform that's, through another uh, video system okay that's correct we we use, for example, you can use YouTube. And what you'll do is you'll record your lecture and post it to YouTube in your own private channel. And then you can take that URL link from YouTube and you can place it in Alex. So when a student has a question, they'll click on that link and it will open up your video. That was yes, the powerful please. piece of this process for us. For the, for the professors. Great, thank you very much. That's a, that's a great question. Mina, um, you have a question? I can unmute you as well. Yes, uh, thank you so much. First of all, uh, it's very interesting indeed. Uh, my question, I am an assistant professor at uh, Faculty of Architecture at Galena University. So, um, yeah, I can imagine really that uh, Alex would uh, perform greatly uh, regarding uh, algebra and calculus courses. Uh, so when I think about architecture um, courses, uh, starting from history and theory of architecture till design studios and so on. Yeah, in the core of our uh, educational system that uh, our students come together in the classroom uh, to meet the professor and then discuss together, uh, uh, opening discussions, uh, play together, make exercises, uh, develop their projects. So th the teamwork and the face-to-face um, yeah, uh, techniques are 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 very uh, uh, yeah, uh, important in this system. So, how can you uh, imagine such uh, a different discipline working on digital transformation and using 
uh, macro health techniques and tools. Uh, and thank you so much. I studied architecture as an undergraduate, so I know exactly what you're talking Perfect. about. And so, one so of the perfect. things that I learned in, in the architecture degree program was that architects were doing this new model 50 years ago. So we, in our curriculum and in our pedagogy, are much further along than other disciplines. Uh, but where architecture has the studio model, uh, we are encouraging now the biology and the chemistry and the physics and the history professors to develop a studio component. Um, I'm going to have to change presentations. I'll show you how this works in a different presentation. So if you'll give me just a moment here, I'm going to go to another presentation that I'm doing for the Jamaican Minister of Education in the... Mm -hmm. Uh, this Friday. Um, what what we do, I hope you're familiar with Bloom's taxonomy. This is a, a yep. way to represent yes. the learning process. So what yes. we do is we do all of the online learning before the class session so mm -hmm. that we can do interactive learning in class. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. is really the model of the future. So we're optimizing mm -hmm. the online high-tech options with the interactive high touch learning. This mm. model has been very successful at Arizona State for the, the areas outside of math. Uh, there's a four mm. step process where we do information acquisition. This is what we used to do in lecture <clears throat> in the mm. class. We do assessment online. This is what we used to do in class when we give them a quiz. And now mm. we focus all of our energy in class on interactive learning, where we work on applied mm. concept exercises. So mm. you take the, uh, the architectural model and you apply it to a history class and it transforms mm. the learning experience. And then the fourth step here is assimilation, where we ask the students to do a follow-up exercise or an essay. So you take that mm. process and you can build an entire course around this process. And so what we've done is we've encouraged the faculty to videotape all of their lectures and integrate that online material with the interactive learning in class. Mm. They are really mm. symbiotic. And mm. I'll give you one other piece of data here. Let me see if I can find it very quickly. So when we did mm. this in Introduction to Biology, you may I remember that I said that we were trying to reduce our withdrawal rate to less than 5%. So this 5%. case, we went from 20% withdrawal to less than 2%. And First. our success rate went from 72% to 94%. So we met both of our objectives. We had more than 90% success rate and less than mm. 5% withdrawal rate. For us, mm. this was the moment when we realized that you have to optimize the combination of technology and pedagogy. And we did mm. this with all of these other classes I mentioned. So I'll go back to the slide. So we've done everything on this list, including philosophy. If there are mm. any philosophy professors uh, in this session, you should know that you too can take advantage of this model. Sometimes mm. this is referred to as a flipped class or a blended class or a hybrid class. So we, we found that this is the the model of the future for our students and our professors. Now, here's, here's the last piece of, of this process. Uh, for the classroom, what we've done is we've transformed the classroom. You won't find the large lecture halls anymore. We have classrooms with round tables. They have technology, whiteboards, the ability to talk to one another face to face. So this is what a class looks like at Arizona State University now. And the goal mm. is to prepare students for real world problem solving. And this is why it's important as you think about your transformation at Galapa that you, that you have a vision of the future that will work for you. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome.
That's an entirely separate presentation. I didn't think we were going to get into that, but I'm glad you raised the question because it is possible to do other classes outside of math. It's absolutely, in fact, I would say it's necessary to do all of your classes using this hybrid model. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. That was a very great question. I'm glad you covered it. And, and thank you, Dale, for going into depth for that as one as well. Any other questions before we close this session? Okay, I guess we're up uh, at the hour as well. Thank you so much for joining us. I'd like to thank Dale Johnson. Thank you so much for your time. I know it was early for you today. You're most you welcome. And thank you for inviting me. And also to Galala University, all the participants for being here with us and joining us for the session. Thank you, everyone. We will be sharing the recording uh, soon with you. Um, until next time, thank you, and this is goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.